Friends, Buzz Lightyear is a hero's hero. He maintains a positive presence, practices realistic optimism, and never gives up on the mission. And yet, we find that his goal remains out of reach. As we look at his story today, we'll talk about how we wrestle with discernment in making decisions and how sometimes God invites us to let go of a good and noble dream and chooses instead to surprise us with something better. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, we trust that you have a plan for our lives. We, like Buzz, want to complete the mission that you have laid before us. As we wrestle with what faithful living might look like when things don't go to plan, help us to hear your words of grace and feel your gentle guidance. Amen. So when I wrote this sermon, I didn't think I was going to have my son next to me. Let's see how this goes. We have hit the board game playing age in the Lee household. We're old enough now for simple games like Candyland and Trouble. But this has created for me a parental ethical dilemma. Do I sometimes fudge the games so that Jeremiah might win a little, or do I play to the best of my abilities as often as possible? Sometimes it's a moot point. Candyland, the cards are what the cards are. You win or lose depending on chance. But if I can control it, I try to make it so that Jeremiah wins sometimes, but also that sometimes he loses. Because losing is a part of life, and I want to prepare him for that. Sometimes you lose the game. Sometimes things don't go your way. I would say, you know, maybe more often than not, things don't go our way. We don't like to lose, but losing is a part of life. We don't like to make mistakes, but making mistakes too is a part of life. The question of life isn't whether or not you'll lose or whether or not you'll make mistakes, but how you will respond when you do. Buzz Lightyear also doesn't like to lose. The movie opens with he and his fellow space rangers exploring a foreign planet. They quickly discover that the planet is hostile. There's creatures that will attack them and vines that will rip up out of the ground and try to pull them down under. And so they try to go for an emergency liftoff. But Buzz is sure he can do it all by himself. He does not need the help of anybody, certainly not the help of the rookie. And so he tries to lift off but can't clear it. And he crashes into a cliff, marooning himself and everyone on board and destroying their fuel cell in the process. This means they can't be space rangers anymore because they can't break the hyperspace barrier. They are stuck until Buzz can discover a new stable fuel source to get them home. And Buzz, he is haunted by the mistakes he's made. He's haunted by the crash. So he works tirelessly to try to create that new fuel source to complete the mission and send everyone back home. But every time he goes and he tests this rocket fuel, because of time dilation, the faster you go, you experience time passing like normal, but for everyone else, it's much longer. So every test flight he makes, everyone around him ages at least five years. So test after test after test. Only days are passing for Buzz, but he's watching as his partner, his work wife, if you will, meets a partner and has a baby, and that baby becomes a child and graduates. And he watches his friend age before his eyes, knowing that he destroyed 
any chance she had to live her life as a space ranger all his, all her days. And he's haunted by that. He lives with a kind of obsession. He wants to make things right. And we know, we know how that feels, right? We don't want to have to stare our mistakes in the face. We don't want to have to face the consequences of our mistakes day after day after day. We want a life where the horizon is open, where we can make any choice we want. We live in the United States, right, in the 21st century, the land of bigger and better and more, and our dreams skew in that direction. But that isn't what life offers us most of the time. And if we read scripture closely, it points us in a different direction to another kind of living. Scripture says curious things like those who want to save their life should lose them and that those who try to save them will lose them. Or from our text today, don't remember the former things or consider the things of old. Isaiah speaks these words to a people who have to stare their mistakes in the face day after day after day. Isaiah speaks these words to a people who have lost, who lost a war, who lost a homeland, who lost brothers and sisters and fathers and their place of worship. Isaiah speaks these words to a people who had nothing except the stories of what God had done for them in the past. Their story was all that they had, and so they told it again and again and again as they sat in exile. They remembered the story of the Exodus, how God ransomed God's people with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, how Moses confronted Pharaoh performing signs and wonders, when Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he pursued the people, God brought God's people across dry land, but then struck Pharaoh and his army down in the mighty waters. It was a good story. They remembered how God had saved them in the past. But like Buzz and his obsession to complete the mission, their fixation on what God had done in the past and where is God because God's not doing the same thing again blinded them to the action of God in the present. And so Isaiah invites them to, to lose their life. Do not remember the things of old. I am about to do a new thing because God was doing a new thing for them. God was raising up Cyrus, a warrior in the east who would conquer Babylon and send the people home. The dream that they're grasping onto, the story they're holding on to so tight, is causing them to miss out on what God was doing for them even now. We see Buzz Lightyear doing the same, obsessively trying to undo his mistake. He misses life with his very best friend. He eventually does create the fuel that allows him to break hyperspeed, but the time dilation is even greater so that by the time he comes back to a planet, his best friend's child has died, his best friend's child has died, and now it's her granddaughter who is raising up a new generation of ragtag space rangers. And they're currently working to keep the planet safe from the robot Zerg. And it turns out that the Zerg are actually commanded by Buzz Lightyear in the future. Future Buzz comes to confront present Buzz because he needs his hyperspace fuel. Buzz had perfected, perfected the fuel so much that he could travel back and forth in time. So he travels back to Buzz and he says, Buzz, if you give me your fuel, we can go back to the beginning. If you give me your fuel, we can go back and avoid this mission altogether. 
You will never have to live with that awful mistake. You can restore your best friend, Captain Hawthorne, and let her live a life of a space ranger her whole life through. You can go back and press control Z on the past decades that you have lost. And Buzz, he's sorely tempted, but he remembers his friend and how much she loved her family. And he realizes that he's been living the wrong story. That what he, where he saw only failure and only a diminishment and only an eclipse on the possible horizons, she, his friend, experienced a full and wonderful life. And he says, what's going to happen to Izzy, her granddaughter? What's going to happen to Izzy if we go back in time? And he said, I can't do it. I can't do it. So he fights off his future self. He chooses the present moment with all of its mistakes. He lets go of that chance to undo it all. He kind of chooses to lose his life right? Rather than save it for the sake of his friend and her love for her family. He lays down his dream of a do-over and chooses life as it actually is. And then we find, once he defeats his future self and ends up back on the planet, having chosen life as it actually is, that his dream is handed back to him. The new commander in charge says the alien robot attack has made us realize that we're vulnerable and we want to raise up a new generation of space rangers. Will you please lead them for us? He let go of his dream to be a space ranger to preserve the legacy of his love, but in setting his dream down and letting go of his obsession, he received it back. Those who want to save their lives will lose it, but those who lose their souls will find it. We want to avoid losing if we can. We want things to go our way all of the time. I include myself in that. I want things to go my way all of the time. We want things aligned to our preferences. We want, and if all, all possible, we want God to do for us exactly what God has done in the past, so that we might know for sure that God was with us, and that we might be able then to control or predict what God is going to do next. When we're anxious, when we're hurt, when we've made a mistake and have to live with the consequences, when we're brokenhearted, our tendency is to grasp on tightly to what we have and grip it in our hands so that at least these things can't be wrenched from us. Figuring that if we work really hard, we can control the outcome. That we can win, succeed, or fix the problem and right the wrong at any cost. But friends, I think that we're mistaken in this. The God who is revealed in Jesus Christ is a God who wins by losing. A God who saves life by losing life for the world that God has made. The God that we worship is a crucified Savior who didn't regard equality with God as something to be grasped, tightly held onto, and controlled, but instead chose to empty himself, to take the form of a servant. We who want to win at all costs, Worship a God who wins by losing, who lays down his life and takes it back up again, who tells us that real life is found when we follow a similar pattern. Real life is found when we choose to lose our life for the other, for in a way that we cannot understand or control or predict, in when we put the needs of others first, when we consider the loves of our loves and we sacrifice for their sake, we find then, to our surprise, 
that our own heart's desires are fulfilled when we put the love of our loves first we find to our surprise our own hearts desires are fulfilled my friends we want to win we want things our way but the god that we worship in jesus christ the god who came so that we might have life and have it abundantly says lose your life and you will save it but if you grasp it too tight it's going to slip past you so i ask you where in your life are you holding on too tight are you like buzz holding on to guilt over a past mistake such that it's become an obsession or perhaps are you like the israelites so focused on what god has done in the past that you are missing out on what god is doing in the present around you even now or perhaps you like buzz you're wrestling with competing desires or you're trying to figure out what's the best good so often we think that god wants more from us but what if it's that god what if it's that god wants less what if god wants us to let go of the reins and trust trust god to do what only god can do which is to bring a new life out of dead dreams to clear a new path when the road we've traveled leads to a dead end what if god wants us to let go and let god to put others first and trust that when we set our life down god will help us pick it up again and give us a new and renewed and everlasting life may we follow the one who lays down his life so that we might find life